Hi guys, it's Chris with City Girl Homestead. So today starts our series of TV dinners. <laughs> so today I'm doing two different ones, so I'm trying to still figure out the logistics and you'll be going along with me to figure it out. So I end up buying these from Sam's. So this is what we're using for our TV dinners. And I told Tom, I says, well, do you want me just to put your lunch in one and then then, you know, just serve you a meal, and he goes, no, you're doing TV dinners, put it in there, so we're going to eat out of the TV dinner thing today, so I am going to do, if you remember last week, I made an extra meatloaf, so that's going to be a side thing we're doing today, and then I'm going to make Salisbury steak, and, you know, I could have just bought it and repackaged, but we're not going to do that, come on. So we're going to do it an easy way, but we're still going to do it because ours is going to taste better than anyone that they packaged in a, I don't know, banquet or whatever they happen to be. So I've got hamburger patties that I'm going to put out here. I guess I should have got my big daddy out. I think I might have to do that, actually. We'll see here. They shrink down a little bit, so maybe... Alright, we got one more to fit in there. And... Hopefully when everything starts shrinking down, it'll fit. <laughs> so this one is going to be very, very easy. It's not going to be one that um, has a bunch of ingredients or anything like that. It's going to be something easy. Because what I want this to be is something easy we can do anytime. And we can throw this stuff together and have great freezer meals or TV dinners, however you want to eat it. Jackson Cloud 9 because he's not cooking today. So we're going to do salt and pepper. Actually, yeah, I think I'll do that. I was going to do my hamburger season, but I think we're going to stick more to a true Salisbury steak kind of thing. So let me get these frying and then try to figure out the logistics in my head on what we're going to do. I'll be right back. All right. So while the burger's cooking, I'm going to just do where I'm going to put the meatloaf. I'm still trying to figure this out in my brain, so it isn't completely figured out. We're going to put the meatloaf just separately in here in the, the pans. I know sometimes my brain will take a minute to catch up. But it will catch up. <laughs> and these are going to be a lot more filling than the ones that we buy at the store, too, because we're not going to have little dinky tiny pieces and whatever. They're going to be actual filling foods. Tom told Courtney last week, he goes, I don't know why she made two meatloafs. And she goes, didn't you watch her video? <laughs> She's doing TV dinners next week. My daughter-in-law paid closer attention. <laughs> Alright, so we want to put a little bit of extra there. We break out a little bit extra there. We gotta make sure we can still close it. I don't really want to make up a fifth one either, so. Now, the fifth one or the other one I do want to make up because um, Tom will be taking one for dinner tomorrow. Alright, I'll be right back. Okay, so what I've decided to do is 
I'm going to boil some water for some mashed potatoes because you know they didn't use real potatoes then either. So we're not going to this time either. So then when I was looking for veggies, I happened to find a jar of gravy, brown gravy that really, really needs to be used up. It's getting close to that date. I'm not going to use it for that one, but for this one I will. And then so I make sure I've got enough to go out. I'm going to water that down just a little bit. And nice we could see what I was doing, huh? <laughs> you know that gravy that comes in the jar? It's so thick anyway. We don't need it that thick. I know this is going to be a bit confusing to do two at one day, but I just had so many that I want to try that I kind of had to. You know what I mean? Like, I just kind of had to. And I hope that this is going to be as fun for you guys. I really do. I hope it's going to be fun. And kind of a look back on yesteryear, you know what I mean? So I legitimately looked up online to find out what each vegetable was in all the different um, TV dinners. So in the meatloaf TV dinner, it was mixed vegetables. So we're going to put mixed vegetables in one of the, each one of these. These are much deeper than the ones we'd have gotten in the freezer section. <laughs> I think that's plenty. I mean, we don't need to eat a 10 million pounds of it. So my hamburger is still cooking. I'm just waiting for the water to boil. And this is going to be a really broke up video and hopefully I get them all put together for you. So I'll be back. All right, I did up three packages of the instant potatoes. So now we're going to put potatoes in there. Hopefully I got enough there for both this one and for the Salisbury steak. You know, and this is going to be actually what kind of gave me this idea is my son and daughter-in-law have been doing meal planning. And then someone suggested the TV dinner thing, and I'm like, you know what, that's a little bit of both. So let's try that. Because, <laughs> you know, we get very, very busy. And, you know, you still have dinners you got to pack for the next day and all that good stuff, so... You can put it over there for now. So, you know, sometimes it's, it's better if you can plan ahead. Maybe a little bit more nutritiously than we're doing today, but all in all, still. So I mix that gravy up, and we're going to put that over top of the meatloaf. I think we should have plenty of gravy for that. I used to always just add butter to my potatoes, but Jack's like, they weren't very filling until Hungry Man come along, but, you know, back in the day, actually, we ate smaller servings of everything, so, you know, actually, it was kind of filling. Because now we, you know, hence, like, I'm a big girl, and so are other people, and, you know, we've just changed our serving sizes. But back then, it was supposed to be enough for a full meal. And I have to admit, some things were not. They were just like, really, that was a tease. <laughs> so now I'm going to put the lids on these. Make sure you seal them really good. And if you do get the ones from um, Sam's, they have a little ledge here that when you um, get ready to... Warm them up in the microwave, just lift up the corner. The logistics of this went better than I thought it would. 
I'm like, you're trying to do two things at once. But I wanted to show you, you know, that if you made an extra meatloaf or something like that, you can still make, you know, meals to carry to take back and forth to work or, you know, like I work from home. I just open something up and it's done. That's great. So here is our meatloaf TV dinner. Let me take one of the lid back off of one. And I think, honestly, mine looks better than any banquet. <laughs> and I think it'll be completely filling, too. So, Alright, so I'm going to put these off to the side. But now we have, out of that extra meatloaf that I made, we have four meatloaf dinners that you can either put in the freezer or you can eat that night or, you know, um, stack them up for meal prep for your work the next day. So there we go. Ta-da, like a commercial. Ta-da. There's the meatloaf. <laughs> I'll be back. All right, so the burgers are done. I should say the Salisbury steaks are done. <laughs> so I'm going to take them all off and put them on a plate. Now I'm following this recipe to some degree, but not completely, if that makes sense. All right. So now, if the one didn't call for onions and mushrooms, and I think you should have onions and mushrooms on it. So I guess that's what matters. <laughs> So I'm going to use some of my frozen onions. And then, of course, I bought mushrooms. I don't think I'm going to need all of them, but... Oh, what the heck. <laughs> if it looks like too many after I've fried it up, then... We'll take some out and I'll just use it for something else. So I'm going to leave all that grease in there from when we did the hamburger. And you guys thought I was just going to make gravy on my own tonight, huh? <laughs> no, we're not. <laughs> no, we're not. I'm trying to follow a recipe here, so. Alrighty. Alrighty. Let's get all this cooked down, and then we'll be back. There's going to be a lot of takes on this one, huh? But hopefully, you guys, I'm really hoping that, you know, it opens up a whole new world of possibilities for meal prepping and things like that, because I think that's an important thing. And uh, maybe we can prep healthier things down the road. <laughs> I don't have much freezer space. That's why Jack is not cooking with me today, because everything that I cook today... Um, except for what me and Tom eat, obviously. There will be two of the dinners sent home to Jack. And then there will be two meatloaf dinners sent home to Jack, too. So, he's not here. There's no point in him cooking the same thing that I'm going to cook for him to take home. So, he gets a break. And he's, like, in high heaven right now. <laughs> so, I'll be back. Okay, so after talking to Courtney and Tom... I've kind of decided how logistically I'm going to do this. All right. So I am going to put two patties in every one of these, except for one. And that'll have just one patty. Because I don't normally eat two patties. That's a Jack, Missy, and everybody else thing, not mine. I don't know how they do it, but they do. So, all right. Let me move you back a little bit so I can get a spoon. Now, I looked up and the official um, vegetable with the Salisbury steak was corn. So, let's put some corn in here. And there's a reason there's five now is because we need one for Tom's lunch tomorrow. He is working tomorrow. All right. And then, oh, I left.
about the spoon in there. <laughs> All right, and then we're going to put potatoes in the extra thing. Well, I just made a mess. Nobody ever said I was not messy. Because I am. <laughs> I think I could have gotten away with two bags. But what I've decided is anything that I have left over as far as potatoes, um, I'm going to use the leftover gravy and potatoes, and that'll be my lunch for tomorrow. How's that? Just a little bit more back there. These are going to be delicious. Delicious, delicious. And I have a mess right there. Which is fine, because I don't know if you guys did it, but when I was a kid, I'd put butter in one of them, and then I'd mix my corn and my potatoes together. <laughs> Alrighty, so those look just about done. And I'm sure there's going to be some left over, which is oh so heartbreaking, because, you know, I happen to love mushrooms. <laughs> Alright, so we're going to use three bags of this brown, brown gravy mix. I don't normally buy it this way, um, but I had some that I need to get used up, so I usually just buy it in that one container. It might help I got it all in there. There's two of them. And the third one, and I've got it in three cups of water. And then it says to use a teaspoon of Worcestershire, which I don't understand that one, but okay. And a teaspoon of ketchup. So I'm going to guesstimate. I don't know what the point of that is either, but who knows? Then I'm going to use this here to kind of mix it together. Yes, this was a gift from one of my viewers and I love it. I don't have to use it a lot, but when I do, I just absolutely love it. Alrighty. And it works so good, you guys. Alright, now I'm going to turn my heat up a little bit. And I'm going to pour all this in with the mushrooms. Alrighty. I'm going to let that get thickened up a little bit. And then I'll be right back. Alrighty. So the gravy is thickened now. And I did take a taste of the gravy. And it does taste a little bit different with that Worcestershire sauce and the ketchup. It does taste more like a um, Salisbury steak gravy. So... Let's bring you back down here. And we're going to pour that over top of those hamburgers. And I didn't heat the hamburgers back up because I figured before you have a meal, you're going to heat the whole thing anyway. So there's no reason to really heat those hamburgers up. And you can use as little or as much gravy as you want. But obviously you have mashed potatoes in there, so you're going to want gravy for your potatoes too. Tomorrow's TV dinner is going to be altered because they don't make pieces as small as they used to. <laughs> so tomorrow's is going to be altered a little bit. But it's going to be great. And I'm actually going to do up some extra so that we have some over the weekend if we want some because 
we got a great deal on it. I'm not going to tell you what it is. You thought I was going to sneak that secret out there, didn't you? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, we're not. All righty. I think I've got enough gravy on all of them. Now, I do have enough gravy that I could actually go back through and I could put it on all the potatoes, but I'm not going to do that. So, let me show you. How does that look for a TV dinner? Pretty good, huh? So, I'm hoping, let's put all the tops on these. Because I'll call Jack over here to come get his. I'm hoping that what this does is encourages us to, and, and it's not only that, but, you know, um... Shows us how to meal prep. It also shows us how to use certain portion sizes. Um, a whole bunch of different things, you know what I mean? And it shows us that we don't have to buy those gross frozen ones at the store. And that they've gotten so expensive. Like Jack looked at a banquet dinner the other day. It was $2.89 for the ones that, you know, used to be 10 for 10. That's ridiculous. So, we can save money. We can make them however we want to, but these ones that we're doing are going to be the old-fashioned ones, the ones that we had when we were kids, well, for us older people anyway. So there we go. Five TV dinners, and we're feeding two families tonight. So I will be back when Tom taste tests. It'll be a minute, but that's okay. It's a TV dinner. I can warm it back up. I just want to make sure I got everything put together properly. So maybe I'll come back real quick and let Jack see his reaction to what he looks they look like. I'll be back. Alright, so Jack's over here now. We're going to have him look at his meals he's going to take home. Wish you could shrink just a little bit, Jack. Alright, this is our first one. Open it up. Don't hit this burner because it's hot. You can sit it on that front burner right there. That's Salisbury steak. So you have two of those. I want to make sure your lids are on tight. <laughs> you drop them on the way home, that's on you. <laughs> yeah, I didn't want no dinner. I won't make no more. <laughs> oh, bummer. All right, and then you can open this one up and check it out. that look? It looks real good. Look better than the ones that we got at the store when we were kids? Yeah. <laughs> Does it look like it'll fill you up? Oh, uh, yeah. He was just saying today, those ones weren't very filling. So there, we'll be back to have Tom t taste test. You want to say goodbye? Bye. Alrighty, so I even microwaved it. There's Tom's Salisbury steak. TV dinner. You know, I used to do these Salisbury steak ones. What? I'd get a spoon and I'd go like this and dump it on my thing for gravy. I know, I did too. Either that or just like put. This. <laughs> well, try your meat first. That's good Salisbury steak, huh? <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Okay, now. <laughs> now you gotta try the bread I made earlier. There's the blueberry bread. It's blueberry cream cheese bread. Well, see, you should have been a little trough here on the side for that so you'd have your dish too. You know what? The brownie. You know what? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> That's good bread. So fit for a king, even though it's a TV dinner? Yeah. Better than the ones you buy at the store? Absolutely. <laughs> Banquet ain't got a chance. <laughs> All right, guys. There it is again. 
You guys have a blessed night. Be a blessing. And Bye, Tom. Bye, Tom. Bye, Chris. Bye, Chris.